It's the winter 2022 anime season, and two of the most popular modern anime are airing. In one corner, there's Demon Slayer, the anime that holds the record for the highest grossing anime movie of all time, and is so popular that even your grandma has probably heard of it. In the other corner, there's Attack on Titan's final season, the end to a show that people are heralding as a new classic and one of the greatest anime ever. These two titans of the industry, if you'll excuse the phrasing, are so big that they've pretty much overshadowed every other show that's airing this season, except for one. Depending on what ranking lists you consult, there's a different show that's taking the top spot, and that's My Dress Up Darling. But how can it be that a slice of life anime about cosplay is keeping up with Demon Slayer and Attack on Titan in terms of popularity? If all you've seen about the show is screenshots on Twitter, you're probably tempted to think that it's all because of the fan service. I mean, the show has Darling in the name and people haven't gone this crazy over a seasonal waifu since Zero Two. In this video, I'll explain some of the reasons why My Dress Up Darling has such a great reception, and why the show is actually a lot more substance than service. Just to give you a little bit of context before we dive in, the basic premise of the show is that there's a high school boy, Wakana Gojo, whose passion is traditional Japanese Hina dolls, a hobby he inherited from his grandfather. He makes clothes for the dolls for his family's business, and wants to become good at painting the dolls' faces, though he struggles with that. Sadly, he's a bit of a social outcast because he's been looked down upon for his unmasculine hobby. He avoids hanging out with people or trying to make new friends, spending all of his time on studying and his clothing making instead. Then he meets Marin Kitagawa, a popular girl who wants more than anything to cosplay her favorite character. When she accidentally finds out that Gojo can sew, she asks if he'll make a cosplay outfit for her, setting their friendship in motion. Now that you know the synopsis, let's talk about the characters. A lot of people dismiss the show's leads as yet another socially awkward loser guy and manic pixie dream girl, but that actually couldn't be further from the truth. Gojo differs from other outcast male main characters in several ways. The first is that he's not an otaku type. He knows almost nothing about pop culture and can't relate to other students talking about anime or games. The second is that he's extremely hardworking, dedicating a ton of time to his passions on top of being studious and doing extra responsibilities at school in the hopes that it will improve other people's opinions of him. The third is that he's actually not socially incapable. He's just afraid because of past trauma that he's had. But he's fully able to have a normal conversation with other people if they initiate it, and his social skills are growing by the episode. Marin may also seem like a cliché character at first glance. I mean, she literally falls into Gojo's life in the first episode, and she is, in many ways, idealized. She's popular and attractive, but she's also an otaku who has a niche hobby of being into eroge games. And on top of that, she initiates the friendship with the main character. But Marin also differs from your stock dream girl in many ways. To start, what's emphasized about her originally is not her looks, but her kindness. She calls Gojo by name before they're even friends, and treats him just like any other student. She also is the only other student not to skip out on cleaning duty in the classroom, and she immediately respects Gojo's hobby, never treating it as strange. In fact, she compares him liking something more feminine to herself liking games that are geared more toward male players. So she's completely different from the teasing girl archetype that's been popular recently. In addition, unlike many recent anime girls, Marin doesn't forcefully drag or pressure the main character into anything. For example, she doesn't say, oh, you can sew? Come on, you're making me a cosplay outfit. Instead, she asks him politely and makes it clear that he can say no. Marin also has a lot of fan service moments, but they're very much in her control. She decides when her clothes will come off and who can see her in what state. And that leads me into another reason why My Dress Up Darling is so good, which is that the fan service is handled very well. There are no unexpected exposures or accidental gropings as of the first five episodes, which is really refreshing given how prevalent these things are even in shows where fan service is completely unnecessary. In fact, Gojo actually doesn't touch Marin at all, even when he's measuring her. He's always concerned about making her feel comfortable, and while he is attracted to her, he pushes that aside to focus on his passion for creation and fulfilling his promise to her. Because of this, the lewd moments in the show feel natural, and they're used to create a growing sense of intimacy between the two characters without them even being in a romantic relationship yet. The other major thing that's likely making My Dress Up Darling so popular this season is that the writing is just really good. The show is actually excellent about subverting expectations. For example, on his way to school, Gojo gets an arm around his shoulder from someone who seems like the cliché anime best buddy type but then it turns out the guy mistook him for another person and Gojo really doesn't have any friends. 
and in another scene, Gojo is so engrossed in making the perfect outfit for Marin that he sees nothing wrong with playing her favorite Aroge game with the volume on full blast so he can take notes on the dress styles. Marin subverts things too. During her entrance when she falls into Gojo's desk, you'd expect that to be their moment of connection. But no, it happens later when he's vulnerable and hunched over a sewing machine in an empty classroom. And in that moment, when Marin's face is set up to look like she's going to be the next Nagatoro and call it weird, Instead, it changes to excitement as she praises his talent and shows genuine interest in his hobby. My Dress Up Darling also does a good job of setting up stakes even in a slice of life show. Gojo has to deal with family health issues on top of exams, work, and making Marin's cosplay. And this leads to several quite powerful emotional moments from both Gojo and Marin. I could go into a lot more detail on the writing, but I don't want to get too much into spoiler territory, so I think it's better to experience it for yourself. The last things that really have contributed to My Dress Up Darling's popularity this season are the visuals and audio. The anime is by Cloverworks, which has a mostly good track record when it comes to visuals, and all of the characters and backgrounds have a great deal of detail put into them. The studio does an especially good job with facial expressions and body positioning, and it's important to get those right when it comes to cosplay. There aren't many lazy shots of just still frames panning. The animation kept my interest the whole time. I also want to acknowledge the voice acting. The actress for Marin, Hina Sugata, actually has very few previous roles, and this is her first main role. This surprised me because she sounds extremely professional and has a very commanding presence. She does an impressive job maintaining a high amount of energy for most of the time, but can also effectively dial it back for more somber or reflective moments. The same goes for Gojo's voice actor, Shoya Ishige. While he has been cast in main roles before, including the protagonist of Yu-Gi-Oh! Brains, he still only has a few shows under his belt. He's done a great job of playing someone who's starting to gain more confidence episode by episode. I hope both of the show's leads are cast in many other productions in the future. So in all, the combination of compelling characters, tasteful fan service, skillful writing, and beautiful visuals and voice acting are the reasons why My Dress Up Darling can be even Demon Slayer and Attack on Titan in popularity. Whether it can keep it up for the rest of the season remains to be seen, but I'll continue watching the show for sure. Thanks for watching! If you enjoyed this video, please consider liking and subscribing for weekly content. I'm Matrix from Matrix AM, Anime, and more, and I hope you have a great day.